Hey, Pura Vida, everyone. Uh, this video won't be too long. Uh, it's regarding the uh, Guadalupe woman. In case you've never heard about it. When I first saw this, I thought it was very interesting. So I wanted to bring it to your awareness. In case you don't know. Um, I want to read out what it says in this meme I saw on Instagram or Pinterest. One of those two. And it says here. The Guadalupe woman is a well-authenticated discovery which has been in the British Museum for over half a century. In 1812, on the coast of the French Caribbean island of Guadeloupe, a fully human skeleton was found, complete in every respect except for the feet and head. It belonged to a woman about 5 foot 2 inches tall. What makes of great significance is the fact that this skeleton was found inside extremely hard, very old limestone, which was part of a formation more than a mile in length. Modern geological dating places this formation at 28 million years old, which is 25 million years before modern man is supposed to have first appeared on Earth. Since such a date for a regular person does not fit evolutionary theory, you will not find Guadalupe woman mentioned in the hominid textbooks. To do so would be to disprove evolutionary dating of rock formations all right so as as this man may stating if this was true it would disprove the way they date you know like how things happen like the grand canyon saying oh that formed over millions and millions of years no that would disprove that and it also disprove you know the whole evolution thing of monkeys and things because the dates wouldn't match right the whole darwin theory right that the that we come out of monkeys because remember this is a, since 1812 so this is before darwinism all right, so, you know, knowing me, I took it upon myself to do some research on this. All right, so what I did naturally was go to, you know, Google and put Guadalupe Woman. And, you know, just this is what I got. Oh, these are the images that pops. I saw this bone image here. But, you know, most of the websites that I get, non-scholarly, you know, like, it's just blogs, blogs and some conspiracy websites, you know, alien websites, you know. So let's go into some of them real quick. Well, this is, well, first of all, I just want you to realize that. So you put this, you don't, you don't get no information really. Like it's just gossip. Like he say, she said, you know, you got to really dig, but let's, let's, let's dig on some of these websites. Yeah. All right. This is uh cool interesting stuff.com unexplained mystery, the mystery of the Guadalupe woman. And it says the Guadalupe woman is a well, hold on. It's a well-authenticated discovery which has been in the British Museum for over half a century. In 1812, on the coast of French Caribbean island of Guadeloupe, a fully human skeleton eye. So we got this already. This must be an old picture drawing. What makes it of great significance is, again, that the fact that the skeleton was found inside extremely hard and very old limestone, which is part of the formation more than a mile in length. Now it says, when the two-ton limestone block containing Guadeloupe woman was first put on exhibit in the British Museum in 1812, it was displayed as a proof of the Genesis flood. So they're saying that at the time that this piece of limestone was taken from French Guadeloupe in the Caribbean in the 1800s and brought to the British Museum, it was presented, it was on display as proof of the Genesis flood. They were telling people this is an antediluvian look, an antediluvian skeleton. But that was 20 years before Lyle and nearly 50 years before Darwin. In 1881, the exhibit was quietly taken down to the basement and remains there to this day. So now we get into the conspiracy, right? All right, so that's all it has. Again, I was like, it's a mystery, right? It's a mystery. It's all a mystery. Now it says the mystery of the Guadalupe woman. All right, and it's gives us the info same info again the Guadalupe woman is well authenticated all right, all right. we got anomaly anomalian.com the Guadalupe woman 20 million years old human skeleton very little is known about this archaeological find even the British archaeologists in whose homeland this artifact is still stored almost do not know anything about it in 1810 the English fleet captured I right, so here's a story we're gonna get another story of the, uh, I guess, origin of how I got to the British Museum. It says, in 1810, the English fleet captured the Caribbean island of Guadeloupe, owned by France, and among the many local trophies captured by the British and taken to England, there was a limestone slab with a skeleton of a woman without a head and hands embedded in it. All right, so 
they're saying that this was already cut they the french had this right because this was a french ter- uh, island owned island so the, in 1910 the english took it from them it was perfectly normal skeleton of a modern type and was discovered in a layer of limestone 1.6 kilometers long on the northeastern coast of the island all right so here's again the image all right now it says before the british invasion Many skeletons of ancient animals and only one human skeleton were found in this place by the French. And the modern dating of this layer gives 28 million years. That is, this layer was formed 25 million years before the appearance of man as such. A plate with skeleton was brought to the British Museum in 1812. And the scientist Carl Koenig, all right, so now we get a name, Carl Koenig, who examined the skeleton two years later, immediately ran into the dating problems confirming that it was a modern type skeleton but honestly admitted that he did not know how old it was so according to this uh, website it was brought to this scientist carl koenig in the british museum he said it was yes it is a modern human but he didn't he could never admit to knowing the exact age of it right in those years the study of the remains of ancient people was just beginning for example the first bones of neanderthal man were found only in 1857 Therefore, the ancient skeleton, even with obscure dating, caused a lot of interest and became a permanent part of the museum's collection of natural history. Towards the end of the 19th century, this skeleton began to attract special attention of creationists, supporters of the divine theory of the origin of the world and man. According to them, undoubtedly, a very ancient and yet completely modern human skeleton pointed to the correctness of their beliefs and belonged to a woman who lived before the flood. We're talking about an antediluvian, an Atlantean, in the caribbean possible right however soon a strange skeleton was removed from the museum shelf to ba- to the basement where it should still be under the number pahr 4128 until 2006 mention of the skeleton could even could even be found on the official website at the british museum but then it was removed so this person in this website is saying that the skeleton you could have found information on the website uh but on 2006 even the information that was on the British Museum's website was removed. So, no one so far as it, as is known has not engaged in a thorough study of the skeleton and has not even made such an attempt. Therefore, some conspiracy theorists from time to time think that this skeleton is hidden from the public so that no one can ask uncomfortable questions. According to skeptics, this skeleton is a maximum from the 15th century AD and it accidentally fell into the layer of limestone, possibly during an earthquake when it when it cracked the curve all right so okay so now this is the, i guess the this this person is telling us this might be the official story that they tell people that i guess they were telling people that, you know after a while maybe people were asking too many questions it's not going with the whole uh timeline and everything they got and the science they teaching us across the geology and all that so they're saying that oh i guess there's the skeptics saying that it happened actually in the 15th century and that somehow there was an earthquake so they're saying look possibly they don't know possibly is that a fact now we're going to the conjecture during an earthquake when it cracked the curve now all of a sudden some crazy idea some crazy thing happened for this to happen and now it's not old it's not part of the limestone as evidence they point out that near the rock with limestone there was an old cemetery as well as the fact that along with the skeleton traces of sand were found in a block of limestone as reported by Carl Koenig. Now, this skeleton may indeed be a 15th century skeleton. However, it is not proven to be so. It still could be of much older age, even of 28 million years old. So they don't know. That's basically what this website is letting you know. And that was a lot of information. So we got a name on this website, Carl Koenig. All right, the scientist again, Carl Koenig. We have a lead. So we're in this other website. It's called badarchaeology.wordpress.com. All right. And uh, it's also talking about the Lady of Guadalupe. It says a Miocene Homo sapien with a question mark. All right. Here we go. Guadalupe woman discovered. So what is known about the discovery of the skeleton in 1812? We know from records of the British Museum that Admiral Sir Alexander Forrester Inglis Cochrane Governor of Guadalupe from January 1810 to 1814 presented it to the museum in 1813. The date of 1812 is when Cochrane became aware of the skeleton, which was among a number of objects taken as booty when the English Navy captured the island from the French. All right. 
So this guy now, now we got another lead, right? So now we got who had it. This is the guy supposedly who gave it, gave it to the English to bring it to the British Museum. It was in a block of stone that was being prepared for transport to France to be examined by the naturalist Georges Cuvier. A bed of rock more than a mile long close to the Lemul on the northeastern coast of Guadeloupe was the source of numerous skeletons. You see, that's where they got it from, of which this was just one. So they had, there's a lot of skeletons there. This is just one. Cochrane had it sent to England where it was examined by, at the British Museum by Carl Charles Koenig. All right, here we go again. Now we got another source saying the same thing. Keeper of the Natural History Collections from 1813. Connick presented a paper to the Royal Society in 1814, announcing that the skeleton was evidently not a fossil. Hmm. What does he mean by that? He was puzzled by it and found it impossible to assign it an age as our geological knowledge of Guadalupe is yet too imperfect to assist in determining this question. So according to this report that Koenig, who was the one in charge of analyzing this, who said this is not a fossil, but definitely... He cannot tell you the, the, the age of it. He's telling you right here. This is a quote supposedly from him. Our geological knowledge of Guadalupe is yet too imperfect to assist in determining this question. All right. They can assign it an age. So, all right. Nevertheless, he demonstrated that the bones were embedded not in solid rock, but in a concretion of calcareous sand. Nothing that it may be a very recent formation. It may be. Oh, it may be. It may be, maybe not. Fossil humans were big news at that time. Cuvier long insisted that no fossilized human remains had been discovered, although he changed his mind towards the end of his life after in the undisputedly petri petrified how many bones was found. Nevertheless, he opposed evolutionary theories that were then being formulated, preferring instead to believe in extinction through catastrophes. Others thought it merely a matter of time until the fossilized remains of early humans were found. A Neanderthal skull in Gibraltar in 1848 was not at first recognized as a fossil hominid. It was not until miners at the Ferhoher Grotto in the Neander Valley found a skeleton in 1857 that the first extinct hominid species was described. The Guadalupe skeleton became part of the permanent collections of the Natural History Museum when it was founded in 1881, accessioned as M168280. Many creationist websites fail to recognize that this is not the same institution as the British Museum. It remains on display from 1882 to 1967, when it was transferred to a store. In 2006, it was re reaccessioned with the number PAHR4128. Unfortunately, it does not currently appear on the museum's online database. There is nothing suspicious about this, they say. The museum holds a very large number, number of objects, and many of the more obscure items have not yet been added. All right, so then it goes on, talking about what loop and the creation is, how they use this. So again, another website. All right, so we got another uh, source here. This is uh, in Google Books. This is actually a scan of the uh, magazine New Scientist. This is from March 29th, 1984. The article in this magazine is called The Case of Miocene, or Miocene Man, by Michael Hogate and Alan Lewis, Go Ape Over British Creation creationism it says now it says here in 1983 a mr w r cooper published an article in the australian creationist journal ex nihilo he claimed that a totally human fossil had been found in supposed 25 million year old lower miocene deposits on the west indian island of guadeloupe the specimen which was presented to the british museum in 1812 was according to cooper Hidden from the gaze of the public after the advent of Charles Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, such a deliberate concealment of evidence, says Cooper, is a hardy in accord with the scientific integrity and objectivity of which evolutionists have hitherto boosted. In fact, it speaks of nothing but downright dishonesty. This conspiracy of silence claimed Cooper was because the skeleton was positive proof of the biblical deluge as it supposedly showed damage consistent with the catastrophic inundation and as the true human fossil from the Miocene, it demolished the concept of the geological timescale and consequently all theories of human evolution. All right, that's what he's saying, this Cooper guy saying, hey man, that debunked all your theories. This 
uh, bone from the meal scene. All right. And you can see this picture right here. It looks like a lot better picture than the ones we were seeing earlier. You can actually look like it looks like it's embedded into the rock. All right, it says Cooper paid several visits to the Natural History Museum in London during the course of his, his researches. In stark contrast to his claim of a cover-up, the museum in the presence of Dr. Chris Stinger and Robert Krusinski was more than willing to show him the forbidden specimen despite its inaccessibility. The specimen had been consigned to the top of a cabinet in the basement after being on public display for many years between 1882 and 1967. Cooper's article in Ex Nihilo and his subsequent pamphlet for the British-based creation science movement, formerly the Evolution Protest Movement, flooded the hominid section of the Natural History Museum with inquiries about this important fossil which the museum had kept hidden for so long. Exasperated by the constant interruption, Stringer was forced to produce a cyclo-style rep reply to this deluge of similar questions from concerned creationists and members of the public, and eventually to produce a refutation of Cooper in the pages of Ex Nihilo. After his visits, discussions and correspondence with Stringer, Cooper still insisted on holding a public lecture under the auspices of the CSM. At this stage, Cooper's activities came to the attention of Brit Britain's foremost and only anti-creationist organization APE, the Association of the Protection of Evolution, current membership, which decided to attend Cooper's meeting in full strength. Cooper lecture had the faithful in raptures which has evidence for witness of the flood whose body suffered extensive violence due to impact by a fluid mass and his re reiterated claim about an establishment cover-up. At question time, however, it was put to him that there were originally several more skeletons and all had been found interred with the same orientation, indicating the probability of deliberate burial. So they're telling him, no, man, it's a burial, it's a cemetery. All right, so this is the article all right, in the New Scientist regarding that. And this Cooper guy, hey, he's 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 so sure. This is like, hey, man, this is proof of an antediluvian. You can see the fractures and everything in his body, the, the way the bone looks like it went through some trauma, like that body, right? So it looks like a flood according to him, all right? But, um, yeah, let's try to dig some more. All right, we got another uh, record here. I just wanted to go over. It says the synopsis of the contents of the British Museum, 53rd edition, which is from 1848. I guess it's listing with the contents that it has and some of the uh, reports on it. And there's a Google book scan. And over here, let me just zoom in. Get it right here. It says, at the west end of the room is the fossil human skeleton embedded in limestone. All right, embedded in limestone, brought from Guadeloupe by Admiral the Honorable Sir Alexander Cochrane and presented to the British Museum by the Lords Commissioners of the Admiralty. All right, so that's all that is in this book. This was a list because they're talking about their exhibits. All right, so it says the most striking specimen is called the Elefanos Canisa, which is based in the middle of the room. All right, and then it says at the west end of the room is the fossil human skeleton. So they're letting you know that this is real. All right, embedded in limestone brought from Guadalupe, a human skeleton. Where is it today? All right, I'm at the Linda Hall Library. Uh, it says here, Science, Engineering, and Technology. I right, do a lot of research here in this uh, library, this institute. All right, get the information about it. Read the about what it's all about. All right, so I have a lot of academic people going there to study and doing free research. It's actually pretty cool. If it's in your area, make sure to check it out and take advantage. All right. So this is the uh, picture or drawing of the, uh, I guess, the limestone. All right, it says... In the fine print here, it says the Guadalupe skeleton found on the Isle of Grande Terre in Guadalupe and given to the British Museum engraved plate from Charles Koenig's article in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, 1814. All right. So we got a big lead right there. All right. So that's where that article is coming from or the most scholarly one and regarding its investigation or officially what, if it, what age it is. Right. So when I Google Charles Koenig, this is the uh, website that came up and they have a lot of information on this actually all right so he was the keeper of the british museum during the same time that this limestone specimen was being brought by the guy we just got alexander cochran presented to the british museum the fossil the human fossil that was brought from guadalupe that was embedded in limestone and the limestone that's 28 million years old all right, all right. so um 
So I found this other book during my research and, I, and it says, it's called The History of the Collections Contained in the Natural History Department of the British Museum, Volume 1. All right, this is from 1904. And it says on page 197 of this book, uh, under the title where it says the Department of Geology, General Sketch, says the collection of fossils was originally assigned to the comprehensive Department of Natural History, which remained undivided until 1837, when Mr. Charles Koenig, who had been keeper since 1813, was relieved of the care of zoology and botany and became keeper of the newly formed Department of Geology and Mineralogy. All right, so Charles Koenig was there, confirmed in 1813 when the specimen should have arrived. All right, we're on page 201 in this book of the historical collections that were in the British Museum. This is in 1813, noted here, a human skeleton in coral limestone, in coral limestone from Guadalupe, West Indies, captured on the taking of the island from the French by Sir Alexander Cochrane RN, was presented by the Lords of the Admiralty. The specimen was described by Mr. Charles Koenig in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, actually, in volume uh, 104 in the year 1814, page 107. All right. Now, you know how long it took me to find this? <laughs> so they have like numerous. So again, this was volume 104 that they got this report. So I mean, there's like 200 volumes of this. It was so hard to find, but I did find it. So here it is right here, Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London for the year, and it says 1814, and part one it says, all right, so we're going to go to all the way to 107, page 107, like they told us, right? Page 107, all right, here we got it. Uh, it says, on a fossil human skeleton from Guadalupe by Charles Koenig, Esquire, in a letter addressed to the Right Honorable Sir Joseph Banks, read February 10th, 1814. 14. All right, so let's get into this uh, article that he wrote and what, it, what he has to say about the specimen that was sent to him by uh, this dude, this British Navy uh, Admiral Commander. Right, it says, the human skeleton embedded in limestone, lately brought from Guadalupe by the Honorable Sir Alexander Cochrane and presented by the Admiralty to the British Museum, having excited the curiosity of the public I do myself the honor of submitting to you a short account of these fossil remains, which though fully aware of the weight of those arguments, you lately urged in conversation as unfavorable to the probability of their high antiquity, I am still led to consider as not altogether uninteresting to the geologist. All right, so this guy gets very deep. He starts quoting a lot of people because what he tries to explain is, yo, so weren't we in agreement? how uh you know fossils work and what uh, layers they were found and what we thought of the age when we in agreement he was he keeps quoting people and different geologists all right now he says something very interesting i was that i was reading a little further down that i want to read to everybody now he starts talking about you know how animals right uh you know are found in this limestone the same type of limestone underwater right and it shows all these different species that some of them they don't even know yet they're still d discovering um but li listen to how he explains it he's, he's a scientist so it says it says from the multiplied observations which this naturalist has com communicated in his numerous memoirs we may gather that the viviparous quadrupeds appear at a much later period in the fossil state than the oviparous the latter being probably cobalt with the fissures, whilst the former are found only in the newest formations, in which, according to Brogniart and Cuvier's interest in discovery, marine beds are observed to alternate with those of fresh water, in which, in the neighborhood of Paris, overlay the coarse shell limestone, which constitutes the last strata formed, all right, as it would appear by a long and quiet stay of the sea on our continent. Now, it says here, all the circumstances under which the known depositions of bones occur both in alluvial beds and in the caverns and fissures of flats limestone tend to prove that the animals to which they belonged met their fate in the very places where they now lie buried all right they're letting you know that these bones these animal bones if they're found in this limestone then it proves that they died there in that very same place where that limestone was all right during that around that age at least hence it may be considered as an axiom that man and other animals whose bones are not found intermixed with them 
did not coexist in time and place. So he's saying, so science, uh, 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 you know, says, since we don't find humans and other animals in this period of this death of limestone, right? Then obviously man wasn't around during that time yet. All right. So that's how they base things off. Right. Remember, is that right? The same mode of reasoning would further justify us in the conclusion that if those catastrophes which overwhelmed a great proportion of the brute creation were general as gymnastic observations in various parts of the world rendered probable, the creation of man must have been posterior to that of those genera and species of mammalia which perished by a general cataclysm and whose bones are so thickly disseminated in the more recent formations of rocks. Uh, on page 111 it says, The human skeletons from Guadalupe are called Galibi by the natives of that island. A name said to have been that of an ancient tribe of Caribs of Guiana. All right. We're talking about so-called black people here. We're talking about aboriginals. We're talking about negros, morenos, indígenas, indigenous people, original people from South America, Guiana. All right. These Caribs. A lot of these, you know, we already know. We got so much references of these people going up to the Caribbean. All right but which according to your plausible conjecture originated in the substitution of the letter L instead of R in the word Caribe. All right. So they're saying that they're really saying Caribe. The Galibi is really Caribe. I find no mention made of them by any author except General Ernoff in a letter to M. Baja St. Fon insert in volume 5, 1805 of the Annales du Museum and by La Ville's and his boys of La Trinidad, published in 1813. The former of these gentlemen writes that on that part of the windward side of the Grand Terre called Le Molay, skeletons are found enveloped in what he terms masses de medrepores petrifis, which being very hard and situated within the line of high water, could not be worked without great difficulty, but that he expected to succeed in causing some of these masses to be detached the measurements of which he states to be about eight feet by two and a half. All right, eight feet by two and a half. And that's the exact size of the slab that they took to the British Museum. The blog brought home by Sir Alex Cochrane exactly answered this account. With regards to the measurements, its thickness was about a foot and a half. This people, these people, these French people who wrote in their journals and their articles about these skeletons as well, he's letting you know. They tell you where how they got it. It was during this, this very difficult place where there was a lot of skeletons, right? And this very hard rock, right? This is written right here, which is being very hard, situated in the line of high water. It could not be worked without great difficulty. So they actually got some of these pieces detached, all right? And one of these pieces is the one that Sir Alex Cochran took from the same French because they took over the island, the English. And they took that piece from them. All right. With regard to the measurement, all right, it says it weighed nearly two, two tons. Two tons. All right. Its shape was irregular, approaching to a flattened oval, which here and there some concavities, the largest of which, as it afterwards appeared, occupying the place where the thigh bone had been situated, the lower part of which was therefore wanton, except the few holes evidently made to assist in the raising the block. The masons here declared that there was no mark of a tool upon any part of it, and indeed the whole had very much appeared of a huge model disengaged from the surrounding mass. All right, it was all from, from the same mass, this, the bones and the, the piece of limestone. The situation of the skeleton in the block was so superficial that its presence in the rock from the coast had probably been indicated by the projection of some of the more elevated parts of the left form arm. The operation of laying the bones open to view and of reducing the superfluous length of the block at its extremities being performed with all the care which its excessive hardness and the relative softness of the bones required, the skeleton exhibited itself in the manner represented in the annex drawing with which my friend Mr. Alexander has been so good as to illustrate this description. The skull is wanton a circumstance which is the more to be regretted, 
as this characteristic part might possibly have thrown some light on the subject under consideration or would at least have settled the question whether the skeleton is that of a carib who used to give the frontal bone of the head a particular shape by compression which had the effect of depressing the upper and protruding the lower edge of the orbits so as to make the direction of their opening nearly upwards or horizontal instead of vertical so he's saying if we had the skull we could at least kind of tell maybe the nation or the race of the the phenotype of this person the bones the vertebrae of the neck were lost with the head the bones of the thorax bear all the marks of considerable concussion all right so they're they're letting you know what's there and what's uh, uh you know what they're observing what he's observing with these bones and are completely dislocated all the bones are dislocated and in concussion all right so it went through some damage it seems like this person the seven true ribs on the left side through their heads are not in connection with the vertebrae are complete but only three of the false ribs are observable on the right side only fragments of these bones are seen There's, he has no ribs on the right side but the upper part of the seven true ribs of this side are found on the left it might at first sight be taken for the termination of the left ribs as may be seen in the drawing the right ribs must therefore have been violently broken and carried over to the left side all right violently broken the ribs were violently you hear what's going on so remember the dude was saying this bone shows that it's been through some trauma had to have been through the deluge or whatever you know <clears throat> a cataclysm who knows you know but uh the definitely if you do the science on it it does look like it's been through some trauma right this the body these bones the sternum must likewise lie concealed below the termination of the ribs. The small bone dependent above the upper ribs of the left side appears to be the right clavicle. The right os humerus loss of the left nothing remains except the co caudals in connection with the forearm, which is in the state of pronation. The radius of this side exists nearly in all its full length, while at the ulna, ul ulna. While at the ulna, the lower part only remains, which is considerably pushed upwards. Of the two bones of the right forearm, the inferior terminations are seen. Both the rows of the bones of the wrist are lost. Hmm. But the whole metacarcus of the left hand is displayed together with part of the bones of the fingers. The first joint of the forefinger rests on the upper ridge of the os pubis. The two others, detached from their metacarpal bones, are propelled downwards. And situated at the inner side of the femur and below the foramen magnum ischi of this side. Vestiges of three of the fingers of the right hand are likewise visible considerably below the lower portion of the forearm and close to the upper extremity of the femur. The vertebrae may be traced along the whole length of the column but are in no part of it well defined or the all sacrum of the superior portion only is distinct. It is disunited from the last vertebra in the ilium and driven upwards. The left os ilium is nearly complete but shattered, and one of the fragments depressed below the level of the rest. The ossa pubis through the well defined are gradually lost in the mass of the stone. On the right side, the os inominatum is completely shattered and the fragments are sunk. But towards the acetabulum, <laughs> part of the internal cellular structure is discernible. Right? So he broke down. You know these bone parts and stuff a lot of, obviously i don't know all these terminologies but if you show me a picture of it i'll be, I'll be like oh okay but a lot of you do i know a lot of you do you study this stuff and or you just do it you just know all right continues says the thigh bones and the bones of the leg of the right side are in good preservation but being considerably turned out words the fibula lies buried in the stone and it's not seen the lower part of the femur of this side is indicated only by the bony outline and appears to have been dis distended by the compact limestone that fills the cavities both of the bones of the leg and thigh. So there's limestone filling these cavities. So how old is this bone? Think about it. Listen to that, right? So there's limestone filling the cavities both of the bones of the leg and thigh into expansion of which these bones probably owe their present shattered condition. The lower end of the left thigh bone appeared to have been broken, all right, lost in the operation of detaching the block. The two bones of the leg, however, on this side are nearly complete. The tibia was split almost the whole of its length 
a little below the external edge, and the fissure being filled up with limestone now presents itself as a dark colored straight line. The portion of the stone which contained part of the bones of the tarsus and metarsus was unfortunately broken, but the separate fragments are preserved. The whole of the bones, when first laid bare, had a moldering appearance, and the heart surrounding stone could not be detached without frequently injuring their surface. But after an exposure for some days to the air, they acquired a considerable degree of hardness. Sir H. Davy, who subjected a small portion of them to chemical analysis, found that they contained part of their animal matter and all their phosphate of lime. The calcareous rock in which these bones are embedded is an aggregate composed principally of sulfitic particles and the detritus of compact limestone. It readily dissolves in diluted nitric acid without leaving any evident residue. It says that the hardness of this limestone as calculated by the degrees of impression made upon it by the masons, saw, and chisel surpasses that of statuary marbles. Harder, right? It's very, very hard. From this description of the rock, it will be sufficiently clear that it is by no means of a stalactical nature and cannot therefore be compared either with travertine or any other chemical calcareous deposition of this kind. Now down here, in the same book it says, respecting the age of these fossil remains, if not much positive information can be derived from the preceding details, they will prove at least that the enveloping rock is not of a stalactic nature and that the bones after they were deposited underwent a degree of violence which dislocated and fractured them without removing the fragments to a distance from each other. It may therefore be safely concluded that the surrounding mass must have been in a soft or semi-fluid state, which whilst it opposed to effectual resistance to a shock from without, readily filled up the chasms produced by it. From the composition of the stone, a late period may perhaps be assigned to its formation. Yet there is nothing in the above description that necessarily implies a very recent origin. All right. You heard what he said. Nothing that he just said implies there's a recent origin. For although there are many instances of gravel and sand being quickly formed into hard masses, and even art has availed itself of this circumstance to produce from the granitic detritus a complete ge generated granite in which cementations of loose Silaceous grains oxide of iron is well known to be a powerful agent, yet we know of no limestone being formed as it were under the eyes of men, for stalactically concreted limestone, as I have already observed, should not be confounded with this. All right, I know this is a lot of science jargon, but I think I, and I you know, all my scientists out there, he's straight up letting you know, all right. They found like gravel and sand, so that's what they're like. They're gonna let you know in these other conspiracy websites that that's what proves that it must be recent too, because they found some other gravel. He's letting you know that doesn't prove anything. All right, he does that. That doesn't prove anything. All right, it doesn't necessarily imply a very recent origin. The circumstance of these bones not being actually petrified, and even retaining part of their gluten, though considered by some as proof of their recent deposition, is by no means conclusive. It's not conclusive. Just because the bones were re really preserved is what he's saying. They still had their gluten. Well, you know, the water was hidden it. So maybe it was preserved really good with the water, the sea salt, right? But either way, he's letting you know. This is a scientist from the British Museum, the keeper there from natural history. All right? Just letting you know. He's the one examining this thing. This is the only report we got of this, you know, bones that were found all right we already know what's up we know america's a true old world all right he's letting you know the circumstance of these bones not being actually petrified just because they're not petrified and even retaining part of their gluten and even though they have part of their gluten they'll consider by some as proof of their re recent deposition meaning some say that this proves that it just fell into this layer it's a recent uh like they say in 15th century or something like pre-columbus or like they're saying Columbus time, right? They're saying Columbus time. It's by no means conclusive. It's not conclusive. That's not conclusive. That's not a strong argument. For there does not seem to be any reason why lapidification of organic bodies should ever take place under circumstances unfavorable to that remarkable process. Accordingly, the bones in the Fletz limestone caverns and in the Brescia of Gibraltar, Dalmatia, etc., appear not to have made the least progress towards a petrified state. All right, those don't, those ain't petrified over there in France. What are you talking about in the same limestone? 
what are you talking about? See what he's saying? See, I know this is not easy to understand, but he's letting you know earlier that there's the same animal bones are found in the same layers of limestone in France, but nobody's saying anything about that not might be in that old. All right. But these bones ain't being petrified either. So what are they saying? All right. So I have to apologize, he says here. Now he ends this report. He says, I have to apologize to you, my dear sir, for this very long letter on a subject which may possibly turn out to be interesting only so far. As the human bones from Guadalupe are unquestionably the only bones we are quite acquainted with that have ever been found embedded in a hard stony mass. All right. You hear that? These are the only bones or fossils of its kind these are the only bones or archaeological finds of its kind at the at least at this time i don't know if they found other ones like that after 1814 but he's letting you know that they've never found anything like this embedded in a hard stony mass that does not appear to belong to common stalactical calcareous depositions this circumstance admits of being easily ascertained by a close inspection of the locality and i am perfectly of your opinion that a comparison of the nature of the different varieties of shell sand with which the neighborhood of the caribbean islands abounds would alone be sufficient to remove many doubts relative to the origin of the bed in question the sand from dense, which I had an opportunity of seeing, was unlike that of which a stone is composed. I have the honor to remain with every sentiment of respect, my dear sir. All right, your most obedient and obliged servant, Charles Koenig. All right, so nowhere, I mean, if you want to keep reading this, he breaks down. He debunks any other, like, uh, skeptics, people saying, oh, well, it has this and it has this. Well, it could be from this age. He does, and he tells you straight up, you, he can't put an age on this. All right. You can't put an age on this. He doesn't know. They don't know. They don't know the age. He didn't give an age, right? He didn't never end the report said how old it was. Again, he let us know there's there's nothing to imply a very recent origin of these bones of this stratus. Again, just because these are not petrified bones and some of their glue was still preserved, it doesn't mean anything. It by no means conclusive of a recent origin. All right. It's, this is all he said. He said, you can't prove that it is or is not old. So after reading this, right, we know. All right, now we're going back to recent times, right? We're in the Charleston Museum, uh, org website. That says, Storeroom Stories, Dr. Phyllis Herman and the Fossil of Guadalupe, right? Let me just zoom in onto this. All right, it says, when a museum is as old as the Charleston Museum, there's an ample opportunity for commemorative events, all right? Now it's talking about the fossils of Guadalupe speaks to the broad connections of Charlestown as well as to the long history of the museum. A second Guadalupe specimen, a skeleton minus the skull, was found on board a French ship captured by the British in 1810. The, this find was deposited in the British Museum in 1813. The specimen attracted a great deal of attention and were originally believed to be of great antiquity. So what happened if they were believed to be of great antiquity? And therefore, a scientific puzzle. It was a puzzle. They didn't know. Zoology keeper Charles Koenig studied the British Museum specimen in 1814 and Dr. James Moultrie published on the Charleston Museum's cutting in 1837. Naturalist George Cuvier studies the specimens in 1830 and determines that they were human bones from relatively recent times in concentrations of hardened sand. Interest in the specimens won, and they and the site fell into oblivion. Oh, really? It got forgotten, swept on the ground. So this dude from 1830s came and said, no, nope, it's from recent time. After, after Charles Koenig already had told us, right? We went to the source, all right? Us all every here, everybody here, we went to the source. We already saw what he said. You can't prove, you don't know if it's old, if it's recent, right? You can't prove it. It's inconclusive. It was determined originally to believe to be of great antiquity. All right. You see what they're doing, right? All right. Because again, the limestone, because uh, Charles Connick was like, if we determine, you know, the limestone, then we can see, you know, how old, you know, it is. And, you know, the limestone. All right. Modern geological dating places this formation, this limestone in Guadalupe at 28 million years old. All right. 28 million years old. So what's really going on? All right. What is really going on? All right, Charles Koenig told us straight up that they cannot determine if it's recent. That's that's not conclusive. You're assuming, and honestly, they are lying to us. All right, and I thought 
doing this video would be interesting and if you want to do further research i think that they should bring this out and do a real test and a modern test in front of all of us all right why do they have to hide you know talking about oldest bones in the world at least if this is to be true right that these are the oldest bones in the world So if we give them the benefit of the doubt, right? So, I mean, it doesn't have to be as old as 28 million years old, right? But it could have, what? This could have happened, what? <laughs> 20,000 years old, 30,000 years old, or, you know, what? 500,000 years old, that's not even a million. Even a, 1 million years old, right? Instead of 28 million years old, right? But the fact is that Charles Koenig told us that the limestone is all the way up in the bone and stuff. This is old. It's embedded. This bone is embedded in this limestone. All right. That's 28 million years old. And they're hiding this. And we didn't know about this. And you saw when I Googled it, nothing comes up. It's all conspiracy websites. All right. Yes, so you can get a perspective because this is in this is up to recently, too. This is 2017. All right. They're taking the credit. All right. But we already know we have people here even before this. All right. But. All right, you know how they try to steal all the limelight. By the way, when you Google oldest modern human remains, all right, this is what you get. And this is again in 2017. It says the oldest known evidence for anatomically modern humans as of 2017 are fossils found at Jebel Itor, Morocco. Dated about 300,000 years old, anatomically modern human remains of eight individuals dated 300,000 years old, making them the oldest known remains categorized as modern. Now, I was planning to do a video on these individuals or these bones they found here because they're saying anatomically modern humans but when i went and digging on them you know they're actually a type of ape still they're not the homo homo sapien or the homo sapien sapien they're like homo sapien or even before homo sapien all right they still have the uh, front elbow ridge uh brow itch that sticks out just like the apes you gotta read into it i gotta i was gonna I, i'm planning to do a video on it all right but i just wanted you to show you you don't have a thousand this limestone is 28 million years old. You know, this limestone is 28 million years old. Again, this was in the Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, a uh, letter by Charles Koenig, the keeper there of natural history in 1814. And you know that it's not conclusive to say this is recent. There's no proof of that. That's just conjecture. He's the scientist. He wrote it down in the scientific review, this scholarly uh, journal they have so many volumes of this again this is volume 104 in 1814 all right they're letting you know this is not taught in your schools they won't even want you to think about this did you even know this existed i didn't all right so i wanted to dig into it and here it is that is the info that you can run with all right so based on all the information that we've gone over regarding america we already know what is most likely the truth about this right and we know the america is the true old world we know the oldest land out of the primordial waters. They told us, you know, if you saw part one of this series, you know, Louis Agassiz told us it was here. The Mayas told us it was America. Atlantis is America. Lemuria, all that is right here. All right, the mythical islands, all that is right here. The turtle, this is the turtle that came out of the waters. This is the oldest, the true old, uh, you know, old world, the cradle of civilization, the true Mesopotamia or Mesoamerica is right here.